It's the finals of the WWE World Cup. Who's the next target for Karrion Cross? And we see the return of Tegan Knox. All this and more on SmackDown Breakdown. Hey guys, how you all doing? The Wrestling Guy back here today and welcome to another episode of SmackDown Breakdown, the series where we have a look at everything that's happened on this week's episode of SmackDown, talk about some of the matches, the promos, all of the other bits and pieces that have happened on this week's episode. The first episode of SmackDown after a very successful Survivor Series War Games. So we're going to have a look at everything that's gone down on this week's episode in this video today, guys. If you guys do go on to enjoy, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Turn that little notification bell so you don't miss any of the content coming up on the channel over the next couple of weeks and going into the new year. As always, guys, thank you for all of the support you guys have shown. You guys are awesome. Without further ado, let's have a look at what's happened on this week's episode of SmackDown. So, we would kick things off this week with Sheamus versus Sami Zayn. So, uh, the bloodline would come down uh, and they would do a celebratory promo after their win inside War Games on the weekend. Absolutely fantastic match, the, both the men's and women's War Games matches. So, I would thoroughly recommend you guys go and check that one out if you haven't already. Um, it was, um, this would then lead to the Ball and Brutes coming out, and this would set up the match between Sheamus and Sami Zayn. This was a really, really good match between these two. Uh, we know that these guys know what they're doing in the ring, to, and they know what they're doing in the ring together as well. It was a competitive match between the two. Um, Sheamus trying to get a little bit of revenge for, for him and the Brutes after their loss inside War Games. Um... This was um th th this was an interesting one because I I went into this match kind of thinking, oh this is Sam uh, Sheamus's opportunity to uh, try and get a bit of revenge on on Sami Zayn. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Sami Zayn would actually be uh be the one to pick up the pin over Sheamus in this one. So that was interesting. Um, but like I said, the match was really really good. Um, not surprised that this was good. Uh, like I said, two guys really really uh, work well together. Um both massively over with the fans at the moment as well for different reasons. Um the Usos um the Usos helping the honorary use uh, Sami Zayn get the victory as well. Um it kind of continues playing on that storyline of, of the issues between uh, uh Sami Zayn and the bloodline have kind of subsided. Um J J Uso obviously we all know has finally accepted Sami Zayn as a member of the bloodline. And it'll be interesting to see if that relationship kind of continues to kind of strengthen or if it becomes a bit sour over the next couple of weeks. So really, really looking forward to that one. Um, like I said, Sheamus picking up the victory. Um, the Bloodline and the Ball and Brutes, like I said, two of the, the big highlights on, on SmackDown at the moment. Absolutely fantastic. Um, be interesting to see how this story develops over the next coming weeks as well. Obviously building up to the Rumble. Who's Roman Reigns' next challenger going to be? A couple of names being thrown in around at the moment. Sheamus and uh, Kevin Owens are the two hot favourites. We'll see what happens. But yeah, really, really good match on there. We would then have a Bray Wyatt promo backstage. Now, we all love a Bray Wyatt promo, don't we? Since, he's, since his uh, fantastic return at Extreme Wars, it has been all everyone's talking about. His tone, his, his demeanour, the, the, the darker side of Bray Wyatt that we're seeing coming out. Um, he, was com he, he was convincing the fans that he was not the one who attacked LA Knight backstage. Um, and he was kind of leaving the fans no further forward than they were before um, in terms of what this LA Knight and Bray Wyatt storyline is going to be. And what role does this Uncle Howdy character have to play in it as well? So keep your eyes and ears open over the next couple of, uh, couple of weeks to see if Bray Wyatt gives us any more indication what's going on. Uh, obviously, it will be covered here on the channel. Back in the ring then, we had the submission magicians, Shayna Baszler. She'd be going one-on-one -on -one against Emma. So the first time we've seen Emma for a couple of weeks, uh, we did see her backstage a couple of weeks ago with Mad Cat Moss. Um, but uh, th yeah, this was, this was going to be a really, really good match on here. Um, so back and forth between the two, Shayna Baszler predominantly uh, dominating a lot of the match. Uh, we would see Shotzi come down to the ring um, and she looked like the absolute ballsy badass that we know that she is. Um, and uh, this, this this all worked really, really well on her. Um, Shayna Baszler in this match, I just want to give a, a big thumbs up. She was um, absolutely fantastic in this match. Did absolutely everything right that she needed to do on here. Um, we had... Um, we had... Uh, 
eventually, as Shayna Baszler made Emma tap out in the uh, uh, in in her in her submission hold, um, and then she would go after Shotzi as well. Shayna Baszler, please give her an opportunity at a title at some point because she is she is so good, and I think that this could be the beginning of a of a big push for for Shayna Baszler. Um, there's been opportunities in the past, but they haven't really done anything with it. So yeah, we'll see what happens on there. Um, the only criticism I have is this did make Shotzi look weak again. Um, we've spoken about this before. We spoke about this on last week's episode going into her match at Survivor Series. Uh, she had that match against Ronda Rousey. It was okay. It did, it did what it needed to do. But this is not a good style here. I, I think that this is setting up ultimately for Raquel Rodriguez, who would also come down to the ring. Um, and I think that this is setting up for... Raquel and Ronda. But we'll see we'll see what happens. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think. But yeah, that the uh, match was good. The interference and stuff weren't so good. But yeah, it is what it is. Up next, we had a video package from Lacey Evans promising that she was going back to basics. So is this the beginning of a, almost a new Lacey Evans? They tried the new character, they brought her back. Um, it didn't massively work. We didn't see a lot of her. Is this a a new Lacey Evans character was saying, is she going back to her sassy Southern Bell stuff? I really hope so, because I really enjoyed that. Probably the best Lacey Evans we've seen. Coming up next, we have Kofi Kingston versus the Intercontinental Champion Gunther in a non-title match. Um, now, this all came about due to the rivalry between Imperium, the New Day, and Braun Strowman. Uh, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser... Um, would uh, and go through would, would cost Braun Strowman his match against Ricochet last week in the semi finals of the World Cup. Um, we now uh, in this match, this was really interesting. Gunther now has a new finisher called the Last Symphony, um, which which we saw um, after his trademark powerbomb only got two counts. So, Kofi Kingston, we all know what Kofi Kingston can do in the ring, he is, he is absolutely fantastic, he is he's so good, he seems to get better and better at Kofi Kingston. Um, but the, again, this match was, was um, competitive. It did everything it needed to do. Um, it made Kofi Kingston look good. He didn't just get dominated by Gunther. He, he, did, he did well. Um, Gunther, um, with the variety in his moveset, continuing to always adapt to certain situations is really good. For a big guy as well, he moves like a, like a high flyer, like a cruiserweight. He's really, really good on there. And he's doing a great job with the IC title, making it relevant at the moment. Um, I think that this is setting up long term for Strowman and um, Gunther, possibly at WrestleMania. We shall see what happens. Um, we obviously don't know what's going on with the Elimination Chamber either at the moment, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I personally think that this is setting up for Gunther and um, Braun Strowman for for the for the titles, um, or for the title. But we'll see. We'll see what happens on there. Um, coming up next time, we had the uh, um, we had. Um, damage control come down to cut a promo. So Bailey and the women's tag champions Dakota Kai and Io Sky, they would make their way down to the ring, um, and they would do the usual heel promo where they insult the local football team and they would talk about the fans and things like that and and the city that they're in. Um, this would bring out Liv Morgan. We haven't seen Liv Morgan for a couple of weeks, so it's nice to see Liv come down. Um. And she would then start receiving a, a one or three beat down, damage control going after Liv. And then we would see the return of a familiar face, Tegan Knox. That's right, Tegan Knox is back. The numbers game proving oppressive again. Liv Morgan retrieved a kendo stick and she absolutely took it to the hills. Um, Knox delivering a fantastic shiniest wizard to Bailey. I love the shiniest wizard and I'm, I'm so glad that we're going to be able to see a lot of that again. Um, so great to see Tegan Knox back as well. She's finally back. Um, she's had a whole host of problems uh, battling knee injuries um, back, to, uh, back to her sort of time in NXT. She's got that history with Dakota Kai, obviously, from War Games a couple of, couple of years ago. Um, I really hope that this is the beginning of something big for Tegan Knox in WWE. We'll see what happens on here. But yeah, this got a huge thumbs up for me. This was a really special moment. I was really excited for this. Um, 
yeah, this 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 was really good. Putting her alongside Liv Morgan as well. Really, really good touch on that. I think Liv Morgan and Tegan Knox is not necessarily a pairing you put together on an everyday basis, but it does exactly what it needed to, it needed to do. Let's see what happens with this coming uh, in the coming weeks. We would then have our main event of the evening, which was the finals of the women uh, of the uh, SmackDown World Cup. Ricochet versus Santos Escobar. So the World Cup has been going on over the past couple of weeks. There's been some big names involved in it, like Sami Zayn, Butch, uh, Braun Strowman. But the final two to, to uh, the final two to have a battle is Ricochet and Santos Escobar. The good old Prince Puma King Cuero rematch that we like from Lucha Underground. Um, Obviously, uh, Santos Escobar would um, begin uh, a lot of the portion of this match with um, the advantage of having the rest of the Gardo del Fantasma down at ringside. They'd be quickly ejected, though, as the referee um, saw potential interference there. So they were gone, and the numbers were even. It was one-on-one, Santos Escobar and Ricochet. Um, Santos Escobar, for me, is a star of the future. I could easily see him... Um, being an IC champion or even pushing to be a WWE champion. Um, he is just really, really good. I loved his work in NXT. Absolutely brilliant stuff on there. He's good in this as well. Uh, Ricochet as well. This has been, I, I think this has been a good year for Ricochet. Um, obviously a former Intercontinental champion. He is just, abs- he, the, the things he can do in the ring, is, he is superhuman. Um, abs- he is definitely the one and only. He lives up to that monarch um, 100%. Um, you cannot get bored of, of Ricochet's kicks and, and that 6.30 splash he, get, he did for, to get the win over Escobar. Um, absolutely fantastic. This was a fantastic main event. Um, perfect position on the card being the main event. Um, it was the perfect end to, to a, what was a really, really good episode of SmackDown. Um, this, this was really good on here. There wasn't. I don't. I don't think there's anything I disliked on this week's episode of SmackDown, which which is which is bizarre. There's always something that kind of thinks, oh, like that's just stopping this week from being really really good, um, and at the end of the match we would see uh, Ricochet and Gunther, because we all know that Ricochet will now challenge Gunther in on the December sixteenth episode of SmackDown for the Intercontinental Championship. So it's going to be Ricochet and Gunther. Um, Fantastic performance by Santos Escobar throughout this whole World Cup tournament, though. I really hope they do a lot more tournaments like this. I, I love, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan that really enjoys tournaments. So let's hope we see one in the, uh, um, again very soon. Uh, Santos Escobar, cracking performance. Let's hope we see some things from him in 2023. I'd love to see him go for maybe the IC title or the US title. There was the rumours of a draft coming up after WrestleMania. So we'll see what happens on here. But really, really good episode of SmackDown. No complaints on the wrestling guy. That gets a big thumbs up from me. That's this week's episode of SmackDown Broken Down for you guys. So if you guys did enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought of this week's episode of SmackDown. And I shall see you in the next one.